it up and listen, didn't it? A very good morning to you, one of the UK's most important public health failures ever. That's the verdict of a damning new report which says thousands of lives were lost at the start of the COVID pandemic due to delays and mistakes made by ministers and their scientific advisers. It pinpoints decisions on going into lockdown too late and how care home residents were exposed. The government says throughout the pandemic, it's been guided by the scientific and medical experts and never shied away from taking quick, decisive action. Our science and technology editor, Tom Clark, reports. On a wall opposite Westminster, 150,000 hearts commemorate those lost to COVID. And today's report from MPs lays plenty of criticism for our pandemic failures at government's door. But it blames the science too. We know that some of that scientific advice was wrong, but also that politicians should have challenged that advice. And there is never 100% certainty with scientific advice. So you can't just say we're following the science. You have to dig down and ask why scientists are saying what they're saying. That challenge should have happened earlier. The report finds that decisions on lockdowns and social distancing during the early weeks of the pandemic rank as one of the most important public health failures the country has ever experienced. Specifically, it criticises the dominance of herd immunity as an idea, saying the UK made a serious early error in adopting this fatalistic approach. It highlights the failures in test and trace and protecting social care, which had devastating and preventable repercussions for people receiving care and their families. There's plenty of criticism to share around in this report between Westminster and the scientific advice it was given. But in terms of lessons learned, there are positives too. Take the NHS and how flexible it was in coping with the burden of disease, but also how it pioneered new research into COVID. And of course, there's all those vaccines. So far, COVID jabs have saved at least 120,000 lives and the NHS proved it could adapt to save thousands more. One thing the good things I think that's come out of the pandemic is we've demonstrated that the National Health Service is the most agile institution in the United Kingdom. The NHS has survived, but in a very broken fashion. And the people who will suffer will be the people of the United, of the United Kingdom. The object of this report, say MPs, is to learn lessons so we are prepared for the next global pandemic. But ensuring we've recovered from this one will have to come first. Tom Clark, Sky News. Well, the Cabinet Office Minister and Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Steve Barclay, is with us now. Hello, good, good morning. morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, I suppose you want to start with an apology to the British public. Uh, well, um, we move quickly uh, in response to the vaccine. Obviously, this report has just come out, so we want to look at it and consider it. That's why we've also got an inquiry to ensure that where there are lessons to learn, we do so. But we followed throughout the scientific advice. Uh, we got the vaccine deployed extremely quickly. We protected our NHS from the surge of cases. But of course, if there are lessons to learn, we're keen to do so. Keen to start with an apology, though, I would have thought. Uh, well, no, we followed the scientific advice. We protected, so no apology? We followed the scientific advice. We protected the NHS. We took the decisions based on the evidence before us. But, of course, we've always said, with something so unprecedented as the pandemic, there will be lessons to learn. We're keen to learn them. That's why we've committed to an inquiry. Uh, and that will be the opportunity to look at what could be done differently and what lessons we take into the future. 20,000 lives needlessly lost because you didn't lock down a week earlier and you don't want to apologise. Well, the issue of the timing of the lockdown was based on the evidence and the scientific advice at the time. The concern was if we'd locked down too soon, there wouldn't be a willingness to lock down for a long period of time. Now, we actually know now that actually there was a willingness of the British public to lock down for far longer than we envisaged. But that reflects the unprecedented nature of the COVID pandemic, the fact that we know with hindsight different things to what we knew at the time. But it's right, Kay, that we look in the inquiry at what lessons there are to learn uh, and ensure that we learn from them. No apology that um, we were told by the then Health Secretary that there was a protective ring around uh, care homes and we know that that not to be the case. Well, the decisions were taken on the evidence and the scientific advice at the time. They were taken to protect 
the NHS, the understanding of issues such as asymptomatic infection and how that spread the disease. We now know far more about that than we did in 2020 at the start of the pandemic. So I think the question for the inquiry will be what information did the government have on something that was unprecedented? Were the decisions informed by the science at the time? Uh, and do we now know different things about the pandemic to what we knew in February in 2020? And of course, we've learned a huge amount, but we did take decisions to move quickly. That is why the vaccine was deployed at pace. That was a success that the report recognises. But this report only obviously came out at midnight. I'm very keen to read it, but we're going to have an inquiry to look at the lessons to take forward to the future. Um, you just took at face value what the scientists said and didn't challenge them. No, I think there was rigorous debate within government with uh, science, but of course it was unprecedented. So it was uh, a developing picture for the scientists themselves. There were areas where I think the government has received credit for moving very quickly, such as with the vaccine uh, deployment. We also moved very quickly to protect the NHS. We all recall the scenes in Italy where its health service came under massive strain uh, and we were very keen to for avoid our own... For reasons we were very keen to avoid that happening to our NHS. So but of course, with, well, it was an unprecedented pandemic, Kay. We were learning about it as we went through. And of course, with hindsight, there's things we know about it now that we didn't know at the time. But we'll look at the report from the Health Select Committee uh, and see what lessons can be taken forward. I suppose my viewers this morning will find it difficult to comprehend that you sent um, uh, care home residents back to their care homes from hospital when you knew that they had COVID and you didn't test care home workers. Well, as I say, we're going to have an inquiry to look at but the lessons. But do you accept the, that, that the, the principal is shocking? Concern, the principal concern at the time was around the surge of patients on the NHS, the concern uh, around delayed discharge uh, and how that would block up the capacity of the NHS. The understanding around asymptomatic infection was very different. We didn't have the testing regime that we now have. That had to be built from a standing start. So, of course, Kay, there are going to be lessons to learn. That's why we've committed uh, to an inquiry. But the government took decisions at the time based on the scientific advice it received. But those scientists themselves were operating in a very new environment where they themselves were learning about the pandemic. I don't understand why you don't want to apologise. Well, there are lessons to learn, but the point is that we took decisions based on the science. Uh, we protected the NHS. We got the vaccine deployed at pace, but we accept where there are lessons to be learned, we're keen to do so. Yeah, but you're representing the government this morning and there were 20,000 unnecessary deaths in the United Kingdom, many of them elderly people, and you don't want to apologise. Well, what I'm saying, Kay, is did we take decisions based on the scientific evidence we were protected? Why don't did you we just save say, lives? We're sorry. Did we save lives through deploying the vaccine at pace far quicker uh, than many comparable countries? Did we protect the NHS from the surge uh, that had overwhelmed other health systems. Yes, we did. Now, were there consequences to those decisions? Uh, and what was the scientific advice we received? And did we make the right decisions? These are legitimate questions for the inquiry to get into. The report you're talking about came out at midnight. I've not had an opportunity to read it. I'm keen to do so. But this is why we have committed to an inquiry, so we can get the lessons but from the But on that pandemic. one fact, 20,000 needless deaths, according to the report, you don't need to go through the whole, you know, hefty report in order to know that they, it says that 20,000 people died needlessly, many of them elderly and infirm. Are you not sorry about that? Well, this is why we're taking decisions, for example, around uh, why social can't you just care say, Yes, patients. we are sorry. Well, there will be lessons, and of course, where there's lessons, we're keen to take that on board. The question you're asking is, in February, March of 2020, did we make logical decisions based on the advice we received. And the knowledge we had at that point on things like uh, asymptomatic infections was very different to what we know now. Now, we've taken on board those lessons. That's why, for example, we've said that uh, people need to be vaccinated if they're working in social care. It's why throughout the pandemic we had funding packages of support, such as the infection prevention control that went into social care. It's why, for example, we uh, applied 11,000 iPads so we could get better data on exactly what was happening within the social care sector. 
But the fundamental point within your question is, are there lessons for us to learn no, from not. what happened at the pandemic? That's not and the answer question. to that is, we will learn the lessons. Minister, that's not my question with respect. What I'm saying is that 20,000 families watching this morning, probably, um, lost a loved one. Uh, they couldn't go to the funerals because either they weren't allowed at all or the, there was a, an extended family and they couldn't all go. Um, we saw um, a young man who was lowered into the ground and his family couldn't be there and they had to watch it on Zoom. Um, 20,000 times that happened needlessly. How can you not say you're sorry? Well, that is heartbreaking, that impact on families, that impact... Uh, in terms of people's funerals is heartbreaking. And I think all of us feel that. All of us have friends and neighbours uh, who were in that situation. Uh, I think in terms of the decisions that the government take, which is what this report is referring to, there were decisions we took on the vaccines to protect the NHS based on the knowledge we had at that point, which were logical decisions for the government to take. But we're keen to learn from that period. It was an unprecedented time. We were working with imperfect information and it's important we take those inquiries and that's why we've got an inquiry to look at that. And was it logical to spend £37 billion on a test and trace system that didn't work? Well, just a minute ago, you were saying that we should have done more to understand asymmetric testing. That will uh, no doubt be one of the factors in terms of what happened in social care because it was the asymptomatic infections that played such a big part in the fatalities that we saw in the social care sector. That is exactly why, from a standing start, we built a test and taste capacity. Obviously, that took a huge amount of effort and, and money, cost. Indeed, it did. Pounds. A huge amount of cost. And but the on the one hand... saying it was pointless, it, was, it, was, it wasn't fit for purpose. Is it, are, are they well, just basically, um, you know, coming up with this report with 2020 hindsight, and it easy for them to say? Well, firstly, I haven't had a chance... The report came out at midnight, so I've not had a chance to read it, so obviously I will need to do so. Secondly, I think if you speak to the leading medical advice in that country, they will not say that test and trace was pointless. In fact, they will say it's a key part of our armoury. Not what the in terms say, of, which is what I'm putting to you well, this morning. Well, I'm saying if you speak to the chief medical officer, if you speak to the leading medics within our country, they will not say that test and trace is pointless. They will say it is an important part of the UK's controls against a repeat of what happened in our care homes. So you can't, on the one hand, say that we were wrong not to have controls around people going into care homes and on the same time say that we were, were wrong to put in controls I'm not saying it, Minister. Trace. This is what the report is saying. I'm just pointing, I'm, to, so the what I'm saying I'm just to, pointing you... to the contradiction in the question between, on the one hand, saying it's wrong to have so controls So you're saying that the report um, is, is benefiting from 2020 hindsight? Well, the report came out at midnight. I've not had a chance to No, but you knew it, you were obviously... on the telly this morning, so I'm sure, you'd, I'm sure that your aides have pointed out the highlights for you. So, well, I'm keen to read it and I, uh, we will engage with it. And the inquiry, I'm sure, will consider the points that are in it. What you're saying is that the report thinks that test and trace is pointless. That is not No, the what they view. said was it was £37 billion pounds was a waste. But it was hugely expensive. And as a former Treasury Minister, I absolutely recognise it was very expensive. But value for money at a time of national crisis changes. And we were doing everything we could in order to put in controls so we could better protect people and learn from the early lessons of the pandemic. OK, let's, let's move on to Brexit, should we? An area that you know 